everybody and welcome to this presentation on Pantheon International PLC or PIP as we call it for short. Today we are going to be talking about the private equity market and how investors can access it via PIP. Please do press pause and read about the risks of investing in private equity. So PIP is managed by Pantheon and Pantheon has been around for almost four decades. It was founded in London in 1982 and has since grown to become a global business with offices in other parts of Europe as well as in Asia and the Americas. We have over $55 billion of assets under management and most of that is in private equity, but we also offer solutions across infrastructure and private debt. There are over 340 of us around the world and we have a large team of over 100 investment professionals, many of whom have been with the business for over 20 years. This longevity, experience and expertise are essential to our business as we are seeking out the best private equity managers around the world and we invest in their funds and also directly into businesses alongside them. We sit on over 460 advisory boards and these long-standing relationships and privileged access to information are critical to our success and ensuring that we are sourcing the best deal flow for over 650 clients, one of which is PIP. PIP has been around almost as long as Pantheon. It IPO'd in 1987, raising £12 million and now has net assets of £1.6 billion. PIP is a FTSE 250 company, which means it has scale. And as you can see here, it has generated average NAV per share growth of 11.6% per year since it was founded over 33 years ago. Like many businesses, PIP has been impacted by the COVID-19 crisis However, it has continued to generate positive NAV per share growth and also private equity is long term in nature and we would encourage investors to think of PIP in the same way. And you can see here that over the medium to long term, both the NAV per share and the share price have outperformed the public market benchmarks. PIP continues to be a top rated fund and we are delighted that PIP is receiving a third party endorsement for its achievements. So let's learn more about the private equity market. Hello everyone. Vicky has introduced Pantheon and PIP to you and I will now spend a few minutes reviewing the current state of the private equity market and the trends and the opportunities that we see ahead. First of all, this is a growth market. Private markets have been growing steadily for the past 20 years and reached over six and a half trillion dollars in assets under management in 2019. Private equity, which is the segment that PIP invests in, is the major portion of this market and it accounted for over $4.5 trillion of assets under management last year. Now that sounds like a lot of capital, but it pales in comparison with public markets where one manager alone, BlackRock, controls over $7 trillion. So what is private equity and what sort of companies do private equity managers invest in? While there are often stories in the media about a handful of the better known private equity back companies from the past. However, what does not get reported are the thousands of businesses that fly under the radar screen, often high growth, high tech businesses that have private equity backing. Some of the household names on this page may surprise you, but they have all received private equity backing of one form or another. Now, what people may not realize is that private equity covers everything from investments in startups all the way through to buyouts of the largest businesses and take privates. PIP invests in all of these stages all over the world, from venture capital, which usually consists of high-tech nascent businesses, through growth capital, all the way to buyouts, which are generally control investments in established businesses. But whatever the segment of private equity, the similarities and the techniques and the tactics used by private equity managers to grow their businesses and to create value. One of the reasons why private equity has become a more popular way of funding is because private equity ban managers do not just bring capital to their portfolio companies, they bring deep operational expertise, networks and experience in building businesses. For example, by optimizing supply chains or accelerating digitalization in the underlying portfolio companies. They also help to bolster management teams, adding talent both to the C-suite and to company boards. And because private equity managers have a long term view, they can invest in growth projects that would be less well tolerated um, as public companies because they might depress short term earnings or require capital, for example, making acquisitions or growing into new geographies. 
This hands-on, super active management approach is particularly important in times of stress. And of course, the industry has been tested by recent events. This chart shows actually the private equity was in a good position going into the COVID-19 crisis. Managers had raised funds while times were good and amassed significant war chests. They'd taken advantage of booming conditions to sell portfolio companies and therefore they slimmed down their portfolios. They'd taken advantage also of some great financing conditions to um, restore balance sheets and to, and to put, put companies in a good position in the future. And very importantly, they'd also invested in their own businesses, hiring operational experts um, and also capital markets teams that could help companies when times became more difficult. Now, of course, nobody anticipated a global pandemic and our managers weren't anticipating this at all, but they were ready for a significant economic downturn. And when the crisis hit, they took action very quickly and they worked closely with their portfolio companies to adapt business models and to secure these companies' futures. So on this page, we've highlighted the way that four different sectors within PIP's portfolio have been impacted. First of all, information technology, which of course is both a vertical and a horizontal. So rapid digitalization, which has affected all industry sectors, has probably been on balance a positive for information technology. Secondly, healthcare. PIP was already investing behind long-term demographic trends in the healthcare market, but when the pandemic hit, a lot of healthcare products and services had to move either online or delivered remotely. Similarly with consumer, many consumer products and services, the delivery had to adapt and we've seen a big uptake in e-commerce and online marketplaces. And behind all of this, financial services had to keep pace and we saw an acceleration of existing trends with cash declining and increased use of, of cards and digital payments. I'd now like to turn to an essential topic which is central to private equity's business model, ESG and responsible investing. So private equity has always been strong on the on the G in ESG, governance, because it, it um, fosters good alignment of interest in portfolio companies. But also the E, the environmental side of it, has been considerably improved over the last few years. With that pandemic, the value of S, social responsibility, has been significantly increased and has come to the fore. Managers have focused not only on portfolio company staff, but also their responsibilities versus local communities becoming involved in the relief effort. It would take too long to give you all the examples of this throughout our portfolio, but we've highlighted four on this page and maybe a couple of particular interest. Four Ways, which is a UK company providing remote radiology solutions in the UK, provided software to NHS radiologists so they could work from home and this was all provided free of charge. At the other end of the scale, Serta Simmons, a very large company, um, in fact, North America's largest bedding manufacturer, donated more than 10,000 beds and mattresses to hospitals in the New York City area. So what do we expect as we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel of COVID-19? Well, the short answer is that private equity is flexible, nimble, and well suited to managing through this crisis and beyond. So while some companies are in pressured sectors, others have actually benefited, and benefited um, from the tailwinds. In terms of valuations after the Q1 dip in valuations, valuations in Q2 actually rebounded and indications are that many sectors will also do well in Q3. The recovery, as we look further ahead, will focus on fundamentals and we expect to continue our thematic approach. Many of the themes that are already in place that I've touched upon will be accelerated into the future. And speaking about the future, the future for private equity and the outlook is positive. This chart provided by Prequin, which is a, um, a, an industry data supplier, shows the forecast growth for private equity over the next five years. And you can see that assets under management are expected to double from the four and a half trillion at the end of last year to well over 9 trillion in 2025. Investors who are in search of outperformance, diversification and access to high growth sectors will continue to pour money into the private equity sector. But where will all this money be deployed? Well, the number of private equity opportunities is increasing as quoted markets shrink in terms of the number of publicly quoted companies. 
And this chart shows this very well. Private markets have been expanding in terms of the number of private equity backed companies. This has grown by about 8% per annum, whereas the number of quoted companies has shrunk by around 2% per annum. And the conclusion here is that if investors want to have access to younger, dynamic and faster growing businesses, they need to invest in private equity. But how can they do this? Well, on the face of it, it might not seem easy. And indeed, many investors don't or can't have access to private equity managers, and they don't have the kinds of relationships that we at Pantheon have been cultivating over many years. Once investors do have access, they need to be prepared to lock up their capital for a long period of time, so typically 10 years or more. And they also need to be able to invest a high minimum amount, which can range from 10 to $20 million. And many investors don't have the resources that are necessary to handle the complex nature of investing in private equity. And that's where PIP offers a solution. So to remind you, PIP is listed on the London Stock Exchange, which means that investors can trade in its shares just like they would in any other listed company. And PIP is managed by Pantheon. So we are taking care of all the complex administration and ensuring that shareholders in PIP have access to high quality deal flow around the world. Hello everyone. Pantheon's platform provides a consistent stream of attractive investments alongside some really high quality managers which underpin PIP's long-term outperformance. The portfolio is weighted to the US, which has historically been the deepest and broadest market for private equity, generating strong returns, whatever the economic environment. PIP also has exposure to some really exciting managers in Europe and Asia in the emerging markets, providing a diversified global approach. Our emphasis on small, mid-cap and growth companies provide access to the majority of the high growth opportunities that we seek in line with our investment themes. Our private equity managers take a hands-on approach to drive change, with many recent examples from our portfolio highlighted on this page. Managers proactively create value in many ways, including encouraging company management to adopt best operational practice, emphasizing recurring revenues within the business model, but also building scale through add-on acquisitions. An example includes Freneri, the second largest ice cream manufacturer worldwide that produces many iconic brands such as Cadbury's ice cream and Haagen-Dazs. Shortly after our investment, the company made a large add-on acquisition in the US, transforming the company's revenues. Many of our companies are in tech-enabled sectors, which comprise the largest sector within our portfolio. For some time, we have steered the portfolio towards high growth sectors that are resilient, including technology, healthcare, and consumer, typically where there's an emphasis on durable business models. The vast majority of our technology companies have held up well this year as a result of strong business models with recurring revenues. Indeed, many small and mid-sized uh, businesses are helped with the company's portfolios, managing their data and systems online. Our healthcare sector exposure is diversified, focused on higher growth segments such as healthcare services, providing a need to have service or product with sustained demand and also benefiting from demographic trends. Our consumer exposure is focused on resilient model business models such as private education, which has held up well despite the pressures from COVID some investments even exhibiting growth. We have constructed the portfolio to focus on higher growth sectors. On the top left hand chart, you can see average valuations for our portfolio that are in line with the broader markets. But in the bottom left hand chart, our portfolio you can see is growing at significantly faster average rates than the market. In the top right hand chart, average uplifts which represent the percentage uplift achieved on sale relative to the prior year holding value of a company was strong at 28%. This reflects historical averages and illustrate the embedded value within PIP's portfolio. We have a very strong balance sheet with a 300 million pounds unused facility that provides very strong protection in the face of uncertainty, adding 
the £128 million worth of balance sheet cash as at 31st of October 2020, PIP's total available liquid financial resources were equivalent to £428 million. When compared with the company's unfunded commitments of £482 million as at the end of October, this represents formidable coverage, arguably one of the strongest among our peers, and underlines the company's ability to comfortably finance its unfunded commitments and support an active investment programme focusing on compelling new opportunities. Pantheon is a thought leader in the ESG space with very strong credentials as one of the earliest signatories to the UNPRI in 2007 and being consistently awarded an a rating for private equity. ESG evaluation is embedded into our investment processes with each individual investment screened for both investment performance and risk and ESG factors assisted by proprietary tools that we've developed internally and alongside RepRisk, a third party service that helps assess ESG risks in both the existing portfolio and prospective investments. We're very proud also of our approach to diversity and the workforce, which is market leading within the private equity sector. Women make up almost half of the investment team heads within the company and also in the overall workforce which we believe ensures a culture of thought leadership and also helps ensure optimal decision making. This approach to diversity is also reflected in PIP's board, with three of the seven directors being female, ensuring we comfortably exceed the Hampton Alexander review target. The company is managed in line with the highest standards of corporate governance and the independent board, which is truly a mini parliament of talents, comprises extremely well qualified experienced professionals from a variety of different sectors. Together, the board provides a robust challenge on the performance and formulation of PIP's investment strategy and ensures shareholders are always first. Furthermore, there is a strong alignment of interests with all directors owning PIP shares. And now we'll summarise. So to summarise, PIP takes a multifaceted approach to risk management. Because it invests, invests directly in funds and underlying portfolio companies through co-investments, PIP can dynamically control its exposure to different sectors, geographies and vintage years. Diversification also helps control risk and PIP's tilt towards the more resilient industry sectors has helped it to weather the COVID-19 storm. A conservative approach to financing has also helped, along with a robust approach to ESG. And PIP is overseen by a completely independent and experienced board of directors, which holds the manager, Pantheon, to account. Now, clearly we don't have a crystal ball, but we're confident that PIP's strong portfolio, its processes and policies will steer us through the current crisis, just as we have weathered multiple cycles in the past. In conclusion, private equity works because of a number of factors, but the long-term investment horizon, strong governance and alignment of interests have a lot to do with the success of what is an expanding asset class. Also, ESG factors are key. They play a strong role in the way in which our portfolio companies are managed and the way PIP itself is run. Pantheon PIP's manager has outstanding ESG credentials and is a highly responsible investor. And PIP's results over its 33-year history have been excellent through multiple market cycles. This chart shows our annual NAV growth and share price growth since inception in 1987, and the long-term performance that's been generated, 11.6% annualized NAV growth since 1987. And this has been delivered through a balanced and diversified portfolio, providing access to private equity on a global basis, participating in growth sectors that can be difficult to access through public markets. PIP does all the hard work in terms of gaining access to top private equity funds and private companies, and investors can gain access through buying just one share in PIP. Finally, PIP is managed by Pantheon with its excellent investment credentials and responsible investing credentials. Thank you very much.